Hello, I'm JW. Now, uh, when refurbishing or uh, doing up various properties, it's quite often the case you find various uh, interesting items, or at least uh, things which uh, I might find interesting, and other people, of course, may have just slung out in the bin and uh, not cared about them. And this is uh, one such item, which I uh, found some while ago. And it's actually a little book here from the Electricity Board, as it was back in the day, as it were. And there's the back there, it's actually from uh, Southern Electricity. And this is pre-privatisation, when, of course, all these uh, companies were essentially state-owned and operated. And, of course, if you wanted electricity, then you could only buy it from one particular company. And if you didn't like the prices that they offered, well, that's just tough because you had to pay them or don't have any. Of course, these days you can buy it from a whole range of different suppliers, all of which basically challenge the same high prices, and therefore there's really no competition at all. But uh, that's really getting off the topic. And uh, let's have a look inside this book and see uh, how it used to be done back in 1986. Now, here's the little book. It's about A5 in size. And, of course, if you don't weigh five years, well, you obviously don't live in Europe. And uh, inside we've got uh, various pages and this whole pack of other stuff here, which is essentially what we'd use if you wanted to apply for some electricity you put into your house. Now, this has never been filled in, which makes you wonder why it was actually in the property, because uh, they obviously didn't fill it in, so presumably they didn't get any electricity. But there you go, it's just basically your name and address and whatever else, a sort of tariff you might actually want, and uh, sign at the bottom and date it. 19 something and it says here at the bottom that uh, unless you're notified separately to the contrary the system of supply will alternate in current AC 50 Hertz 240 volts single phase because of course this was before the uh, useless European harmonization where the voltage is now in fact uh, 230 volts although in reality it's still 240 volts just the same as it always was and on the back here there's a whole load of terms and conditions which basically means that uh, if you damage anything then uh, you have to pay for it and a whole load of other stuff there, which uh, basically says are very similar. And they may require security for payments for electricity supplied. And if not, then they may withhold or disconnect the supply. And uh, certainly electricity was not some kind of given right. It's something you definitely had to apply for. Now I've got this yellow card, and the top says a bit brown because it's been poking out the top of the actual book. So it got rather grubby, but never mind. And the back is totally plain, other than the thing that says to look on the other side. And as it says here, your electricity supply can be reconnected by turning on the main switch or switches. That's assuming they haven't removed the fuse or chopped it off in the street because it was some kind of drugged in. But uh, do make sure that all the electricity in your home are safe and working properly. Quite how you're supposed to do this is not entirely clear because basically if you just moved into a house, just banging on the main switch uh, would certainly identify if there's any major faults. But of course other stuff, there's no way to know. And you probably should arrange an inspection by a reputable electrical contractor. Southern Electricity will be pleased to provide this service for which there is a massive charge, probably at least ten times anyone else's price. And of course, if you haven't read the other things there, you should do. And if you want anything else, you should uh, contact Southern Electricity immediately. And the telephone numbers are not shown here, but you have to look in the telephone directory. And for those people who were aged under 20, that was a heavy piece of dead tree, which basically had all the phone numbers in. There was no internet or uh, looking it up online because there weren't such things. And of course you won't be using a mobile phone either, you'd have to actually use the telephone which was installed in your house. And if you just moved in it probably wouldn't work, so you'd have to wait another couple of weeks for that thing to be actually connected. So in the meantime you'd have to go down the street to a telephone box and uh, insert coins in there, and of course uh, make the call from that. Now here's the book itself, and I say it's a orange coloured thing with uh, black printing there. It certainly didn't go to the expense of full colour. And in the back here We've got a list of the tariffs for home users, and they say here from the 1st of October 1986. And it gives you some information inside about the prices. And of course these are ridiculously cheap, considered to what you would pay today. So, for each private dwelling we've got a quarterly charge of £7.02. Each unit consumed is 5.09 pence. And if you want to have a prepayment meter, which is kind of you shove 50 pences in or whatever, then a charge of £3.90 per quarter will be made. And if you want the luxury of a three-phase supply, or in other words, if you've just been given one, then there's yet another charge of £2.08 per quarter. And if you want the Economy 7 tariff, which was a deal whereby uh, you uh, could use electricity at night on a cheaper rate, then your quarterly charge is 8 97 Each unit in the daytime is 545 and notice that that is more than the uh, 509, which we were quoting on the previous page. But of course the real savings at night 
when the unit's only 1.9 pence. And your three-phase charge is the same. And night is seven hours between uh, 2300 and 0900. Obviously, it's not uh, seven hours between those two, but it's any seven between those two hours. Daytime means everything that's not nighttime. That's all GMT, so in the summer, of course, it's shifted forward by one hour. Now, I will scan this book and actually put it on the website if you want to have a look through the entire thing at your leisure. And links to that in the description below. And the website is at flameport.com if you haven't already seen it. Now, you can pay by sending a cheque or postal order in the mail. You can pay by cheque, cash or energy stamps at any Southern Electricity shop or district office. There are no Southern Electricity shops anymore. In fact, any other electricity shops, they all closed down long ago. And you can't buy energy stamps anymore either. You used to be able to buy those at the post office for like sort of a pound each. And you stuck them in a book and then you could use the book as payment for your electricity bill at a later time. Bearing in mind that it's quarterly. So uh, at the end of three months, the uh, actual amount due could be pretty substantial, particularly if it was the winter and you had electric heating. Uh, check and cash, of course. Uh, check and cash from post offices. And buy direct debit, which at the time was a fairly new and uh, novel way to pay. And you can pay by standing order, by uh, spreading it out over the year. You can make monthly payments to your Southern Electricity shop, all of which have long gone. Pay as you go. You pay what you want when you want at any Southern Electricity shop. And then those amounts are deducted from your bill. So basically you just go and give them some random amount of money and then you don't have to pay the whole bill in one lot. Saving stamps again, that's a similar thing to the energy stamps up there. The only difference between these are for electricity only. And those were for uh, obviously for energy stamps there, but they're basically the same thing. Prepayment meter, which takes 50 pence or less likely 10 pence coins. You're not going to get very far with 10 pence coins even in the 1980s. The disadvantage is that there is an additional charge and you may run out of coins at an awkward time, such as on Christmas Day, and then you can't get any more. And of course the other problem with these prepayment meters was the fact that when you put the coins in they actually were stored in the meter in a box, so it certainly wasn't beyond people to uh, hack these things open and take the money out, or do other dubious things such as uh, making a mould of a 50 pence piece in a lump of plasticine, filling it with water and putting it in the freezer, and then of course you had a uh, ice 50 pence coin which you could shove in there and of course uh, get electricity for free. And the water went into the box at the bottom and then basically uh, melted and dripped out on the floor. So when the person came to empty the thing, there was mysteriously nothing inside. Of course, you didn't get away with that because then they found there was no money in it, so you had to pay at the end anyway. But uh, nevertheless, uh, things like that did go on. Monthly bills and payment problems. And I've got a couple of nice pictures at the back here. Here's some woman with her Economy 7 cylinder with a big label stuck across it in case you forgot what it was called. And of course, this was uh, supposedly a cheap and effective way of heating, though even in the 80s, it was still much cheaper to use gas heating. And there's a picture of a delightful modern storage heater, which is only six inches deep. That's from the old Dimplex XT series. And yes, they are about six inches deep. And if you buy new ones today, they're still about six inches deep. In fact, they're exactly the same. They're just a box of bricks and a load of heating elements. This is the back of the book, and it's just basically a metal map of the Southern Electricity area. This is largely still the same these days, although uh, Southern Electric actually now covers part of Scotland as well, for some inexplicable reason. But uh, that's basically your area there, so you've got Bournemouth, uh, of course, here at the bottom, on the white and off to the other usual uh, parts there. And on the other borders, you've got uh, basically Southeastern Electricity Board, the Eastern Electricity Board, and the Southwestern and the Midlands, of course, all uh, state operated different organisations. And again, you say you couldn't buy your electricity from anybody else, that's the uh, area you lived in, so essentially that's who you had to buy it from. And uh, price wise, you paid what they told you to pay. Now, here's the main book, and say it's sort of orange and black on the front there. Got a sort of a fold up piece there to stash all of your accessory parts inside. And so we'll just have a uh, quick look through this one as well. It's got these uh, horrendous black and white drawing cartoons in it. And it's supposed to explain how things are priced and how to keep costs down and uh, all kinds of other information, most of which is uh, reasonably fine, but uh, some of it, as we'll see, is uh, way off. And of course you've got your how to pay and so on in the back there. Electricity meters. There are two types of electricity meters here. We've got your digital meters, which are the modern types of meter. 
Of course, these are all totally obsolete now and have been replaced with yet another type of modern meter. And even those themselves are being replaced with those smart meters now. Dial meters with the evil pointers on the front, which uh, confuse plenty of people. And uh, tunes on with uh, more of the uh, horrible cartoons. If you can't pay your bill, you're presumably outside the job centre, sitting on a windowsill, attempting to get some kind of employment. And uh, inexplicably, in the job centre, there's something that says no vacancies. Now, of course, that's uh, complete lies because these uh, they're not called job centres anymore. But uh, even when they were, they were always filled with hundreds of vacancies. Of course, all the kind of jobs that nobody wanted or would actually care to do because they paid you nothing for huge amounts of tiresome work. This is about how it's going to be cut off if you don't pay or when it might not be cut off. Security deposits. Not something you have these days, they just fit a uh, card meter, which means you have to pay huge amounts of money for your electricity and uh, possibly pay off debts at the same time. Of course, at the time there, it was uh, if you're a bad payer, you may have to uh, pay off a great deal of deposit in the first place before they even give you the actual electricity. They pay interest on the deposit to the customer, how generous. At the moment, this is 86, the interest rate on the deposit is the rate of 10% per year. Now, that seems absolutely unbelievable now, considering that the uh, bank of interest rate at the moment is 0.5%, so getting 10% return on the deposit, absolutely astounding. But of course, in the 80s, interest rates were much higher than they are today. When your husband or wife runs off, disconnections and rights of entry, and yes, they can still do that today. They uh, can apply for rights of entry to uh, get into your house and do disconnections or whatever. Pretty rare, though. I'd say on heating costs and again insulation being put in. Hot water cylinders must be properly insulated. They recommend three inches of mineral fibre. It reduces losses from 16 pence to 5 pence a day on the Economy 7 tariff. Even in 1986 that was a piddling small amount of money, and let's face it, you're saving what, 11 pence a day over the course of a year. The insulation would cost far more. Double glazing is really justified on energy saving grounds alone, and that's the same today as any other time. It costs thousands of pounds and takes about 50 years to save any money on your heating or electricity bills. And the rest of this is fine, how to save things, obviously turn off lights and things and don't leave your fridge hanging open. Now there's a section here about how much electricity do appliances use, and this is largely correct. Basically 1000 watt appliance for an hour is one, and 100 watt for 10 hours is one. Of course, that's the same as it ever was, but then it gives an example of some of the appliances you would have in your home and the sort of usage you would have. And uh, a fair number of these things don't actually exist anymore. Or even if they did, nobody would actually use them. Blankets. Now this is referring to electric heated blankets, which you can still buy inexplicably, but quite why nobody would want to use them is something of a mystery. A single double and single and double in the uh, over and under blanket varieties. Unders went on the top of the mattress and uh, overs, of course, went uh, over the top of you. The source of many fires and uh, other problems. So basically it's a uh, two layers of fabric with hot electric wires stitched between them and when you plugged it in the wires heat up and set fire to the bed. Or probably not but uh, maybe to say uh, somewhat dodgy and doubtful devices. Uh, this page cooker, well that's fairly uh, straightforward. Dishwashers, well they certainly existed in 86 but they were definitely not a common item and plenty of people didn't have one. Certainly luxury products at the time. Extractor fans, 40 watt fluorescent strip light. They changed to 36 uh, fairly shortly after that, and of course, even fluorescent lights you can still buy now, but certainly going down the route of obsolescence with LEDs, food mixers, freezers, hair curling tongs, and a hair dryer, hair rollers, which was a deal you uh, had your rollers and put them in a stand and then stuck them on your head afterwards. I believe you can probably still buy those. Your slimline storage heaters now. That's the six inch thick jobs. Slim line only because compared to the ones previously they were slim as the older types were at least twice as thick and in some cases considerably more. Different types of fires and heaters. Hot water if you insist on heating it electrically, which unless you had no other option you wouldn't ever dream of doing so. And the various useful things here. Spin dryers, highly unlikely anybody's got one of those these days. You can use it for five weeks on one unit. Presumably that means just intermittent use, not turning it on for five weeks and leaving it running. Stereo systems, tape recorders, tea makers, which uh, you can still buy, I believe, but uh, again, a pretty unlikely thing these days. 
22 inch tele television well not the CRT variety these days a black and white television no you can't buy those anymore tumble dryers good way to literally piss money away and your uh, vacuum and washing machines of course uh, no problems with those and you can buy all these appliances from your electricity board and they'll know that be happy to repair them if you want to pay an extortionate price for them to do so. I've also got a section here about wiring a plug. Now the mid-80s was when uh, appliances were starting to be sold with plugs already attached, but prior to that you had to buy a new kettle or something, and then you had to buy a plug separately and fit it yourself. That was changed primarily because people were fitting them wrongly or not bothering and just shoving the wires in the socket with a couple of matchsticks. And if you think that's an exaggeration, well sadly it isn't. A uh, public information film was made about that particular subject, and uh, as astounding it seems these days, yes, people really did do that kind of thing. And of course, fuses and uh, other things at the back there. Now, there's a section here which is about wiring in your home. So, uh, consumer units, of course, for modern things, miniature circuit breakers instead of fuses, which again were sort of available at the time but were certainly not the normal thing. And we've got some older houses do not have a consumer unit. Instead, they have a main switch and a fuse for each unit, one for the cooker, lighting, and all kinds of other stuff. If yours is like this, it is likely to need attention, and this was in 86. And I happen to know there's plenty of houses out there that still have this stuff, so uh, by now it's totally obsolete and should have been replaced, well, basically back in the 80s. You must use a pull cord switch in the bathroom. That was true at the time, but uh, not any longer. And no socket outlets are allowed. That's sort of the case now, because it's within three metres of the bath, which, unless your bathroom is massive, means you can't have any. Plug-in timers, which should not be used for heaters and the likes, and that's still valid today, because, of course, if you uh, plug things in on a timer, they could switch on automatically and uh, set fire to your curtains. Storage heaters are perfectly safe, except when they're covered. It uh, doesn't actually mention that, but uh, cover up a storage heater, it theoretically will switch off and not work anymore, or it could set fire to the curtains. And at the time, things like RCDs were not common. They could be had, but they were rare. So say if you live in a rural area, you may have an earth leakage trip, which is the old uh, voltage-operated style. But uh, customers without these things are unlikely to experience failure of all electricity in their home, unless the uh, main fuse has failed. So that's the uh, state of electricity in 1986, which, uh, although it might seem a uh, massive long time for some people, it wasn't actually uh, that long ago at all. And say half the appliances listed there don't even exist anymore, and even if they do, nobody uses them. And of course things like your new modern storage heaters, of course, uh, well, modern at the time, but uh, certainly not any longer. And again, things like coin-operated meters and whatever, all long gone. Now, so I have scanned this, so it is on the website if you want to have a look at the entire thing. I'll take a link in the usual place in the uh, section of the description for this video. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.